Each campus has an instructional coach. The high school has two. What they're designed to do is to help all classroom teachers with their curriculum, the content, the training, help them to make sure that they're meeting all of students' expectations, help them to also grow as master teachers, each of the teachers, and to constantly communicate with administrators and to look at the data to continue growing the program. The instructional coach has been able to keep us focused as a team, um, as a campus, and and looking specifically at the instructional needs of the campus. They are an invaluable resource. They are a not an evaluatory person. They are a resource for the campus teachers within those departments that they serve. We have coaches on every campus that are there to support their teachers. Uh, we report to our curriculum director, but our main focus is to help support the teachers in any area of training. That means um, if they need to do webinars, if they need to know more about IFMs, if they need to know how to print documents, we go in and the great thing about our instructional coaches is that we have the time to go in on their conference periods, catch them early in the morning after school, so we can catch them when it's convenient for them. When people ask me what I do, I say I work primarily with teachers to improve instruction and I do that in a number of different ways through modeling, through lesson planning. Uh, a big part of what we've done since we adopted C-Scope was to oversee the implementation to support teachers in that. You have the time to sit down and create the ideas or look at the data, um, whereas they might not always have the time in their busy schedules as a teacher and trying to meet all the needs of everyone. You have to really focus on what your academic goals are on each campus. And in, in doing that, you have to realize that our teachers are already busy and trying to make everything happen that they do in a normal day. But by the same token, teachers need people, such as instructional coaches, to help them improve, to help them have lesson plans, do the things that they need to do, and find new ways. It's, in some respects, it's, it helps with staff development, but also in some respects, it helps teachers work through their day-to-day -day lives in the school district. They can do anything. It doesn't, it's not content specific all the time. They can help a fine arts teacher if they have to. Um, they're just there as a resource. I'm always there to be um, a person, again, that can support them, that they can talk to if they just need to vent about time management and say, oh, and I'll say, well, we'll work this out. We can get a system in place. You just want to be anywhere and everywhere. Um, and so the best way to do that is to be visible. So try to make sure anytime possible going in and out of classrooms and that's when teachers realize that they need something or they need help with something or they need an idea. I think modeling lessons is a key point to that. Having an instructional specialist right there who can go in, teach that lesson, even on the spot sometimes, um, and, and then brainstorm with that teacher, what, what are the issues, what could I have done better, why wasn't that working? Very experienced, they're very knowledgeable, at least Ms. Kozadar is very much so. And they will guide you towards the, the goal that we're setting for our campus. And they're also a liaison between you and the principal. So they, they, um, they're in close connection with the principal, they're close connection with you, they're in close connection with the kids. I rarely just go into a room and observe. I usually am engaged with students. I'm usually engaged with teachers. Now, I wouldn't say always, because some teachers aren't. And it almost becomes a co-teach situation where I might be thinking out loud something that I think a, a child might have a concern about. Or uh, I see something on a paper or, or in an activity that's a struggle for a child. And so I try to bring that to light in a question to the teacher. You want to go in and observe and see what teachers are strong at, and you want to see areas in which they can improve. They provide resources. They're the ones that get us the data that we use. They can help a teacher, particularly new teachers, who have um, who needs, need help learning strategies, um, but also experienced teachers. If I have a question about pretty much anything, I can go to Julie and she can find the answer. If she doesn't know it, she can get it for me. Even master teachers have conversations with the instructional coaches about things. And how, how the instructional coaches just play a vital role, like I said, as a daily resource for a teacher on the campus that's struggling with one thing or another. And it can be simple or it can be complex, um, but they're an invaluable resource. And when you're an instructional coach over a broad group 
that is very varied in instruction, you try to help them. Well, there's some common strands like classroom management, time management, uh, the different systems, training, those kind of things. But when it comes to, for example, IFMs, I can look for in the data patterns. Uh, as we were talking this morning, there was one question where it looked like it was just spread all over the board and we talked about that looks like a question the kids were honestly guessing on. And we can bring that up and we can discuss that. And a lot of times the teachers will say, you're absolutely right. So even though I don't teach world history, I can look for those patterns uh, and some of those things that are consistent throughout. Julie does the language arts and the history, social studies and English, and I do the math and science. And I just basically help the teachers with whatever they need, supplies that they may need, or if they need me to check out a lesson, I have a great idea, why don't you come and see what it looks like. Tell me, give me feedback, what do you think? What to share and what not to share, because you can't always share all of your concerns with uh, your administrator either, because then it undermines the trust of teachers. Uh, find another coach who's in the same position that you can, you feel comfortable with and you can share with, um, in a, obviously a professional manner, but there's, that's probably the only other person who really and truly knows what it's like to walk in your shoes. It's very easy for someone, especially when they're not, don't have classroom assignments every day, to become over supervision, to become a pseudo administrator. And in doing that, uh, that takes away from the focus of the program and it waters it down. And what I have to do as superintendent is make sure that that program stays intact and that the principals use it for what it was planned for. The biggest benefit is the student achievement. It has shown all the way within the classroom that we are able to then meet all the student needs because of the coaches, because how they're working with administrators, with the curriculum department, with the, you know, with uh, the teachers, and with each other to literally be a full district implementation within starting with the campus level. They're, they're real great to, to, to me. They're real positive, always have a good attitude, and, 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 and come in and, and will give us help whenever we need it. I have found the teachers very open about that. Uh, things like just starting your classroom off on the right note, making sure you're well planned, things on your board are organized, you know, various best practices like that that I can use across the board, whether it be a Spanish class or a world history class. As with any other program in, in a district, we do have program evaluations. This year we currently have just done one on the instructional coaches. We had our goals, we met them, and we now are implementing the next level. We keep logs. We ask the curriculum department to keep logs of what's happening with instructional coaches on the campuses. How are they spending their time? And working with principals to make sure that what they're having them do is in focus and in tune with the program that we're trying to accomplish or achieve. If you have those support pillars in place, you're going to retain a lot of those quality, strong teachers that you need to have on your campuses because they're going to feel supported. They're going to feel like someone is there for them, someone to, to help lead them when they have questions.